Uncharted 1 is, in its own way, an important game, but it is kind of garbage. And that's kind of funny because Uncharted 2 is like one of my favorite games. It's like this dynamic, exciting thrill ride, whereas Uncharted 1 is like one of the most boring games I've ever played. And I think that's fascinating because these games share so many qualities. I guess first I should qualify my earlier statement about it being important. Um, this game came out at a time when cinematics and characters in video games were an other. They were separate. A person playing a video game had to suspend disbelief in order to visualize the characters on screen as human. They needed to look past how characters didn't have facial expressions and how they moved kind of clunkily and they had to kind of fill in the blanks in their mind in order to visualize these characters as real. What Uncharted 1 did was kind of move us forward into an era when we can look at characters in the video game and recognize them instantly as human. It does that through motion capture, it does that through high quality voice acting, it does that through facial expression, and it just does that through a visual upgrade that came with the PlayStation 3. Uncharted 1 is kind of, looking back at it, it's kind of unique in that it still maintains kind of the cartoony look of the developer Naughty Dog's previous games, the Jack games, but um, instantly these characters are recognizable as humans. And that seems kind of silly to say now, but at the time that was a huge huge thing for video games, and it's something we're still feeling the repercussions of now. Unfortunately, that doesn't translate into a quality narrative, which is one of the main problems with Uncharted 1. In Uncharted 1, we're introduced to the character of Nathan Drake, who is basically Han Solo. He is a treasure hunter, he is roguish, he is scrappy. And, uh, I mean, he's a, he's a good character. He's fun to play as because he has this knack of saying exactly what the person playing the game is thinking. And that's cute, and it's gotten him this far. I don't have a lot of complaints with Nate as a character. Um, Sully is kind of the mentor. He is this, like, <laughs> chomping cigars. He's got the Hawaiian shirt on. Elena is kind of a photojournalist, and she's kind of a love interest for Nate, and she centers him. She kind of plays off him in a way that makes him more believable because she kind of brings him down to earth. And it works. This is a strong trinity of characters. In this game, the problem is that they don't explore these characters the way they do in later games. So coming back to this game, it's kind of insulting how little they fill in the blanks. You're launched into the narrative of the game as it's happening, and they don't do much to ever fill in the questions you might have. Um, a lot of the characters kind of rely on tropes to get by. For instance, you meet Eddie, who kind of leads this mercenary group you fight, and he is not explained really in any way. He has history with Nate, so they kind of have this thing going on, and it kind of shows up in the cutscenes because they're kind of playful with each other. But beyond that, Eddie doesn't really exist as a character. He is just kind of an idiot, and you are against him because he is against you, and that's that character. And that's how most of the characters in this game operate. Elena really wants to make her TV show. She's always got her camera with her. Then she loses the camera, and then she's over it. Sully gets shot. Nate is sad for a sec. He gets over it. There's a lot of things that happen, and then the characters get over it, and they go kind of back to the status quo. The main goal of the game, I guess, is to get El Dorado, which is this big statue. And it's basically a MacGuffin. You spend the entire game searching for it. It's never where you think it'll be. It's always in the next place, so you gotta go to the next building. It's not satisfying in that way. Um, you play as a treasure hunter, but it never feels like you are hunting treasure. You are basically just shooting people and getting to the next building. And that brings up the shooting mechanics, which are extremely disappointing, but mostly because games are still using these shooting mechanics, and they are terrible. I hate cover-based shooters. They are poison. We need to stop using this mechanic. Because here's how the combat in Uncharted works. You get into a room. There are a bunch of pieces of waist-high cover. And you'll recognize when you're about to shoot dudes because there's all this cover littered everywhere. And then what happens is a bunch of guys come into the room. And you run up to the first piece of cover, you press circle, and you crouch behind it. 
And then what you spend the next five minutes doing is waiting for dudes to pop their head up, and then you pop your head up, and you get shot a bunch, but you get a couple shots on them. And then you go back into cover, they go back into cover, and you do that a couple times until the room is empty. And oh my god, it is like the most boring way to handle shooting in a video game that anyone has ever come up with. There is never a moment in this game where you're like, that was awesome. Because all it is is whittling people down slowly, one by one, until the room is empty. It's awful. And this is the main gameplay in the game. And it's made worse by the fact that your reticle doesn't move very well, which I guess you could explain because Nate is not a hired gunman, he is an explorer. But they do so much to negate that fact by having you kill hundreds of people who are hired guns and who should be able to take down a dude in jeans, especially since there's like 10 of them at a time. And it's kind of ridiculous made more ridiculous by the fact that it is far more effective for you to punch someone to kill them than it is to shoot them. You can kill someone in fewer punches than bullets. This is insane, and it feels so weird every time because you can kill someone with one kick, but it takes like seven M4 rounds to take somebody down. So bizarre. I don't understand it, and they actually incentivize you to melee people because you get more ammo from doing a brutal combo, and it, re it reminds you of the brutal combo every time, but it doesn't matter because it doesn't take any ammo to kill somebody by punching them in the face. So there you go. It's never really acknowledged that Nate has superhuman people killing abilities. It's very odd. Later games in the series make it feel more like you are worming your way out of situations by luck, by sheer luck. In this game it feels like you are a force of nature who is here to kill everyone. But you're a treasure hunter, which means there's little treasures hidden in the environment. Except instead of being hidden in the environment, they're right over there in the corner and you can see them. So the gameplay loop in this game is a cutscene. Go to a room, shoot a bunch of guys, go to the corner, get the treasure that doesn't actually do anything for you except unlock trophies and like concept art, and then do that again until the game's over. There's also sections where you jump. The jumping isn't good. You kind of move the stick in the direction of where you want to jump, and sometimes he will kind of reach out to let you know that you can jump that way. Sometimes he doesn't, even though he should. Sometimes you jump in the wrong direction. Sometimes... Um, it's the 800th rock wall, and you don't feel like climbing it, but you have to because that's what you do in this game. And there is one section, and it's actually funny because I was like, man, Assassin's Creed 2 did this so much better. And then there's one section where it's basically Assassin's Creed 2, and I don't know. Maybe I'm prescient. I don't know. But one of the more disappointing aspects of this whole thing is that they put bad guys in places where bad guys should not be and it completely removes any satisfaction you get from exploring because it never feels like you're breaking into some like sealed off tomb that hasn't been seen in centuries because there's dudes with shotguns in there and there's no way they should be there there's no physical way for them to get into this tomb here they are and you have to hide behind cover pop out shoot them it should be this grand adventure but instead so much of it is spent in courtyards shooting at the same three enemy models over and over you are Nathan Drake, you are a treasure hunter, you should be exploring tombs, you should be raiding tombs, you should be a tomb raider. Instead, you are Marcus Phoenix. It's also a very difficult game in a weird way. Maybe I'm just bad at video games. But it doesn't help that the health system is broken. So, this game kind of helped popularize the idea of the screen changing depending on how much health you have. So if you get shot up a bunch, the screen is going to turn gray, it's going to turn gloomy, it looks like you're about to die. But this isn't a good system for displaying health to the player because you never know how close you are to death. You're never sure if one bullet will kill you, you're never sure if two bullets will kill you. So you're never sure if you can make it from cover to cover, and I understand sort of the inclination towards this health system because they don't want health bars on screen, they don't have to worry about health packs in the environment, but 
it's not useful to the player and it leads to situations where the player isn't sure how much help they have which is a bad spot to be in also there's zombies at the end or something what this game needed was more adventuring it needed more environments that were fun to explore instead of you feeling like you're walking down a hallway for the entire game um, i understand that's hard to do i'm not a game designer but i'm sure 10 years ago it wasn't very easy to make this wide open jungle for you to explore. I understand why it's just this log and some rocks to climb, but they could have done so much more to spruce that up at least. Instead, it is this brown and green tunnel that you walk through for the entire game. And it never feels like you are exploring a single thing. It feels like you are being led to the next cutscene so that you can shoot more people in the head.